Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 107 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and to you, the listener. You make this ministry possible. And if you would like to support our ongoing ministry efforts, giving options are conveniently located in the show notes. We'd love to have you on the Building Great Lives team Here at the Building Great Lives podcast, it's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. Thank you for sharing these episodes. We're praying these messages of hope reach every possible person in every possible nation. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to develop a healthy view of ourselves. How we view ourselves matters. There's so many things that will come against your mind and try to convince you that you are not what God says you are. And we're going to talk about some of those things, and we're going to talk about the importance of overcoming them. When you really grasp hold of who you are in God, how God sees you, you will rise above all the negative self-talk that you are telling yourself. God does not see you the same way you see yourselves. How we see ourselves matters. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, the wise man Solomon said, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. In other words, what we think about matters because it forms the basis of who will become. Think of your mind, how you think as a steering wheel of a car. The steering wheel controls the direction the car goes. If you turn the steering wheel to the right, the car goes to the right. If you turn the steering wheel to the left, then the car turns to the left. Our thoughts, how we think about ourselves is the very same way. If you think of yourselves in the light of God's redemption, you will turn yourself toward your purpose. But if you think of yourself in the image of your past, every time you do that, you are turning yourself towards something that will limit your progress. That's not what God wants for you. God wants you to turn yourself toward him, toward his will, toward your destiny. And I believe that God is desiring for some of you to begin to rise up through the past and begin to get a new glimpse of who you are in God. You are not your past. It's time you start seeing yourself in the new light. So the goal is to have a biblically balanced view of ourselves. Now, we've all met people that are vain or arrogant. Those people think too highly of themselves. But we've also met people that are very critical of themselves. Paul warned in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Highly in this text means vain or arrogant. Vain or arrogant people overly focus on their strengths and their abilities. And it's important to note that you can be confident without being arrogant. Just as some people think too highly of themselves, there's the other extreme. Too many people think critically of themselves. Those who think overly critically focus on their failures 
and their weaknesses. The goal is to get this biblically balanced view of ourselves, not arrogant nor critical, to see ourselves as God sees us, to see ourselves as victorious overcomers who recognize it was God that delivered us and not we ourselves. It's hard to be arrogant when you remember that God is the one that saved you and not yourself, that you couldn't do it on your own, regardless of who you are, your last name, the amount of money you may have, your talents or your abilities. They could not save you. Only God can save you. And so we can't stand in the arrogance of our own abilities because we could not save ourselves. And the same is it's hard to be critical of yourself when you remember that God robed himself in flesh and died so that you could live. See, Jesus knew that you were weak. He knew that you would mess up. He knew your failures. He knew your sins. And yet he willingly laid down his life for you. That's powerful. When you begin to understand that, all of a sudden, that critical view you have of yourself begins to change. The Lord knew in advance that I was going to mess up. He knew in advance that you would have weaknesses and failures. He knew in advance that you would have struggles and difficulties. He knew in advance that you would repent and then stumble again, yet he gave himself for you. Why? Because he does does not see you as broken beyond repair. He does not see you as clay that needs to be thrown away. He sees you as clay that can be put on the potter's wheel and shaped in the image of the potter. It's time that you begin to tell yourself, I am not my past. I am not the mistakes I have made. I'm not the pain that I feel. I know that you've gone through things that it seems like you should have already gotten over. I understand that that. But the Lord knew all of that as well and still gave himself for you. That means you are better than you think. No, we don't stand in arrogance, but we do stand in the confidence of our God because the Lord has taken us and shaped us and changed us. And because he's changed us, I do not have to walk around with my head down at the thought of who I used to be. The apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. And continued on in verse 8 and 9 by saying, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You are no longer what you used to be, and so you do not have to feel the shame of your past. You can rejoice in becoming a new creature. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man, that's you, listener, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's time to start seeing yourself as the new that God created you. God is looking for you to understand your worth. The reason that so many of us feel the way we do about ourselves is because we do not understand our worth. We see ourselves as something that surely no one would pick. But the Lord looked down at us and had compassion on us and saw the value in us. And if the Lord sees the value in us, Who are we to condemn ourselves when the God of heaven has not condemned us? It's time to begin to see yourself in a new light, in the light of God's revelation. God delivered Israel just as he promised he would. Israel journeyed to Sinai. 
then spent a year there during which time the law was given and they built the tabernacle. Israel then journeyed from Sinai to Kadesh Barnea on the border of the promised land. They had only been wandering in the wilderness around a year and nine months when Moses sent 12 spies across the Jordan to spy out the land of promise. The Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 17 through 20, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get ye up this way southward and go up unto the mountain and see the land what it is and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities there be that dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land." And after 40 days of spying out the land, the 12 spies returned. Numbers chapter 13 verse 27 says, And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Milk and honey means it was a productive land. They brought back pomegranates and figs, as well as a cluster of grapes so large it had to be carried on a staff between two men. It must have felt amazing to finally walk in the land that God had promised them generations before. But I want you to notice how Numbers 13 continues. In verse number 28, it says, nevertheless, The people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil, which means negative, report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. In verse 33 of Numbers chapter 13 is a verse that I want to key in on. It says, And there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. How did they see themselves? As chosen by God? As powerful, as anointed, as the ones walking into the promise that God gave them? No. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. Now, I want to tell you, listener, they used the wrong measuring stick. They measured themselves against the giants, the walled cities, and the armies. They should have measured those enemies against their God. Of course, the giants were bigger than them. Of course, the armies there were bigger than them. Of course, the walled cities were stronger than them. But the giants and the armies and the walled cities were never stronger than God. And because of how they saw themselves, the enemy saw it. I want to ask you a question. What are you measuring yourself against? Are you measuring yourself against your struggles? Or are you measuring your struggles against your God? Because as long as you measure yourself, 
The frailty of our existence will always be weaker than our struggles. But that's why we have a God who said he would never leave us nor forsake us. We have a God that has empowered us with the infilling of his spirit. We no longer have to measure ourselves against our struggles. We can measure our struggles against the power of our God. And in the middle of that, we will learn that as long as I measure my struggles against myself, I will see myself small like Israel saw themselves small. But if I measure my struggles against my God, I will begin to see myself as mighty, not in my own abilities, but mighty in God. We've got to start measuring ourselves by the right measuring stick. It is to be measured by God not by our struggles. That's the reason that some of you have a negative self-image. You are still measuring your identity by your past. But God wants you to measure your identity by his presence. And when you get that revelation, everything changes. Because when you measure yourself wrong, there are always consequences. But when you measure yourself right, there are miracles, signs, and wonders. Same with Israel. Their consequences came about because they saw themselves as small. They said, we are like grasshoppers. And so we were in the sight of the enemy. How they saw themselves became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Israel cried out and said, would that we had just died in the wilderness. And God said, okay. And that generation died as they wandered 38 more years in the wilderness. How you see yourself matters. How they saw themselves did more harm than the giants and the armies that occupied the promised land ever could have done. Israel missed entering in to the promised land without the giants or the armies firing a single shot. Israel defeated themselves. They were a delivered people that still had a captive mindset. In other words, they let the enemy that stood before them shape the identity of what was within them. Israel was spared destruction, but lost the privilege of immediately entering into the promised land because of how they saw themselves. As individuals, we can be just like Israel. It's time, listener, for you to conquer the grasshopper complex. There are many factors competing to influence how we think of ourselves. The first is the devil. The enemy wants you to think you are the mistakes you've made, that you're broken beyond repair. He wants you to think that God would never use you. The second is other people. People can say and do things that leave you feeling horrible about yourself. And the third thing, ourselves. Sometimes we think horrible things about ourselves. These three influences are continually vying for your identity. These are trying to influence you into having a terrible self-image. They're trying to keep you from inheriting the promises of God. You need to ask yourself, what does God think of me? The prophet Jeremiah gives us insight into God's thoughts toward us when he said in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Who you are is not based on your education, your economic value, or your social status. It's based on how God sees you. It's not based on your past or your pain. It's based on how God sees you. It's not based on 
the troubles that you have found in your life, it's based on how God sees you. It's based on your relationship with Jesus. It's time to embrace who God says you are. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, the apostle Paul wrote, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When in Christ we do not inherit trauma, we become heirs of the promises of God. Romans 8, 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's how God sees you, as a conqueror, not as defeated. He sees you as a conqueror. Jesus is greater than your past, your pain, or whatever others have said about you. Jesus is greater than the negative thoughts you've had about yourself. Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 describes our identity in Christ as chosen, holy, blameless, adopted, accepted, redeemed, and forgiven. That's who you are. That's how God sees you. Don't accept Satan's narrative or other people's or even your own about who you are. Satan tries to define how you think about yourself, but it's what God says about you that counts. Listener, hear me. God does not see you as broken, so stop seeing yourself that way. God does not see you defeated, so stop seeing yourself that way. God sees you victorious. God sees the potential in you. God wants you to see yourself through the lens of Calvary. There are biblical examples of people that had to change how they saw themselves. When their circumstance changed, They could no longer have the same mindset. It had to change. First, blind Bartimaeus. Then the leper at the mountain. And then the woman at Jacob's well. All of these had life-changing experiences that required them to see themselves different. Blind Bartimaeus received his sight. He was no longer a beggar. He no longer had to see himself as a beggar. He could see himself healed. He did not have to walk around and say, well, I'm just a beggar on the side of the road. No, he's healed. Too often we try to identify people with their circumstances. But once they've been healed or delivered, they are no longer what they were. They are now a living witness, a testimony of God's power. And that's what you are. Can you imagine the leper that met Jesus at the mountain and said, Lord, if you will, heal me. And Jesus reached out and touched the leper and healed him. He no longer had to feel like an outcast. He no longer had to hide in shame. He was healed. He was different. The woman at Jacob's well, she went to draw water at an off time to avoid the other ladies. Why? Because she had five husbands and the man she was currently living with was not her own. She lived in shame. Jesus revealed great truths to the woman at Jacob's well. He offered her living water and she no longer had to see herself according to her past. Once Jesus touched them, they were no longer who they used to be. There was no longer a reason for them to see themselves in that image. They needed to see themselves as healed and delivered. Think about this. Can you imagine the man that was healed from leprosy going out in public for the first few times? Anytime someone got close, he probably naturally wanted to cry out, unclean, unclean, don't get... But wait, that's not who I am anymore. I'm not that guy anymore. I was that way for a long time, but that's not who I am anymore. The lady at the well no longer has to go and draw water at a different time. She can go and draw water at the right time because that's not who she is anymore. Blind Bartimaeus no longer taking up a place at a roadside wearing the garments of a beggar. That's not who he is anymore. You are not who you used to be. It's time for you to start seeing yourself in the reality of God's provision. You are a child of God. You are powerful. You 
are anointed. You have been touched by God, regardless of your past, regardless of your failures, regardless of your mistakes. When you come to the things of God, when you repent, when you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with His Spirit, you are a new creature. You are not who you used to be. The Lord does not see you as who you used to be. So it's time for you to stop seeing yourself as you used to be. It's time for you to see yourself as God sees you. It's hard to be victorious if you're always thinking in a defeated attitude. You will not even fight if you see yourself as having already lost the battle. But it does not have to be that way. You are not who you were. So stop thinking like the old you. Start thinking like the new you, the one that is born into the kingdom of God. And as has become our tradition here at the Building Great Lives podcast, I want to pray for you, listener. I want to pray that God would encourage you and strengthen you in your mind and spirit. Jesus, I'm asking you to help each listener. Lord, I have felt very strongly that you have directed me to record this episode. God, I pray that you would reach down and touch every listener wherever they may be. God, I pray that you would restore their confidence Lord, reveal yourself to them. God, I pray that someone would rise up right now spiritually and say, I am not going back. I am not going to view myself as the broken man that I used to be. I am going to see myself as restored and powerful in the kingdom of God. And as always, Thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend. Maybe text them the link or share it on your social. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum. That's G-I-L-L-I-A-M. On Instagram at Rev Gillum. You can also reach me at Building Great Lives Podcast at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, let's keep building. You've been listening to the Building Great Lives podcast, a member of the Real Life Church Network. Join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions. 